Okay, so, so far we've covered the definition of derivatives, and they, as you've probably noticed, they take a very long time because of all the algebra that's required, and it would be great if we could find some shortcuts. And so, a long time ago, some guys started finding patterns when they were taking derivatives by definition, and this is one power, or one pattern that they found called the power rule. And what the power rule does is it'll take any polynomial in the form of x to the n, where n is some, no, some number, for example, x squared. And it, when you take the derivative, so don't, don't be confused by this d of x, d over d of x. So d over d of x is basically equivalent to prime. And so what you'll see sometimes is you'll see like d f over dx, and basically what that means is f prime of x. So these are the same things, and this just equals derivative, right? So don't be confused by that, but anytime you see this, it just means derivative. It means the same thing as the prime symbol that you see here. So, but basically what the shortcut will do is it'll get you the uh, derivative. So let's take a look at if we let f of x equal to x squared, and we take it by do it using the definition again. So if f of x is that, what is f of x plus delta x? Well, that's going to be x plus delta x quantity squared. And when we multiply that out, it's going to be equal to x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared. And f of x will just be x squared, right? So let's remember what the definition of the derivative was. It basically states that f prime of x will equal the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x. You better have this memorized because it's gonna come back. You'll need it divided by, or sorry, minus f of x divided by delta x, okay? And then once again, we'll plug in this function into this guy and this function into this guy. So when we do that, we'll get the limit as delta x goes to zero. And if you aren't comfortable doing this yet, I would go back and do more examples because what, like I said, it'll come up when you least expect it. So we get this and then we minus the f of x term over here. So that's x squared and we divide by delta x. And like we've seen before, uh, when you're doing it right, things cancel. So here we get an x squared and we minus x squared. So that's good. And we can also, it appears that we can pull out a delta x out of each. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. And we get the limit, as delta x goes to zero, of delta x out 2x plus delta x divided by delta x. Okay? And again, we get a delta x on top and bottom, and those will cancel to one, okay? And now we can take the limit as delta x goes to zero because we no longer have a delta x on bottom, so it won't blow up to infinity, and this goes to zero due to the limit. And we're left with what? We're left with two x. So there's your derivative in terms of the definition. But now let's see if this new, uh, this new trick will work. So what we're gonna do with the new trick now, remember d of x of x to the n. So this is equivalent of like x to the n prime, so no difference. And let's plug in our problem here, which was uh, x squared. So now we basically say, d of x is of x squared. So we rewrite the formula here, it's n times x to the n minus one. So in this case, we have a two up here, so n equals two. n equal two, okay? So everywhere there's an n in this equation, we're gonna to wanna to put a two, so we get two, and we get x, and then up here, there's an n minus one. So n minus one would be, n minus one would be one. 
So we get 2 times x to the first. Well, x to the first is just 2. It's just x, sorry. So we get 2x right there. And you can see these two are equivalent. So we've just shown through one example that this is valid for any polynomial. So that means any function that is x to the n. Thanks.